If you love airplanes but don't feel like taking a passenger, then we have the aircraft for you, the Thatcher CX-4. This aircraft, whether you build it or buy it, can be had for $25,000 or oftentimes less. It is powered by a Volkswagen engine and can pull you through the air between 110 and 120 miles per hour, all the while sipping auto fuel at 3.5 gallons per hour. KC flew over from Panama City Beach today to our home airport to give you an up close look at the aircraft he purchased for less than $25,000. All right, so over here at my hangar again, uh, luckily I had an uh, opportunity to have Casey come over here and interview him at my own hangar. So Casey, introduce yourself and what this is sitting behind us. My name is Casey Shakui and this is a Thatcher CX-4 that is sitting behind us. Now I understand you didn't build this one, but you purchased it and where did you pick it up from? I picked it up north of Oklahoma City from a gentleman who had bought it from the gentleman who had built it and um, it hadn't finished its phase one when I got it. So naturally I went over there and took the wings off. Um, we, it had its own trailer. The, it, it had a custom built trailer. We put it on the trailer and I... Well, that was convenient for you. Yeah, it was. And that was one of the reasons I wanted the aircraft because naturally since it's a single seat and I didn't know it was my first experimental aircraft, I didn't want to fly it right away or there without anybody talking to someone that has flown it. With the help of my IA at the airport, we put it back together, inspected it, make sure everything was running right from the engine to the fuselage and the wings and everything was up to snuff. My very first experimental, I had never owned an experimental aircraft. Don't have time to build one, but I got really attracted to the plane because it's all metal um, and I, I like the wing setup and everything on it. But we took it apart, I brought it home, um, showed it to Glenn. I, I drove on the trailer, I left it on the trailer, went to Glenn. And, and that's uh, Glenn Bradley, who is the um, supporter of all the Thatcher aircraft, Thatcher line at this moment. Yep. Yeah, that's correct. So I, I I called him. He told me when to bring it over. I went to P Pensacola Airport. They looked at the airplane. I fired it up on the trailer because it was tied down to the trailer with the wings on the side. So I fired it up on the trailer, and we listened to the motor. He looked at it, and he told me, he said, Casey, this, this is as good or better than we would have put it together. He says it's built very well. I didn't have ideas, so that gave me another level of confidence. And to give everybody some more details on this, uh, this is obviously Volkswagen engine powered. There's a couple different Volkswagen engine options out there, and this one is the Revmaster? That is a Revmaster 2100D. It's supposed to produce somewhere around 70, 75 horsepower. So um, I brought it to my airport, and with the help of my IA there, again, this is the very first experimental I've ever owned, <clears throat> we put it together. He did essentially another inspection on it to get a sign-off on it. Went through about a month and a half of working with the local FESDO and trying to get a DAR um, uh, to come and look at it and sign off where I could take the first flight so one of the things I wanted to, one of the reasons I wanted to bring Casey on and talk to you all about this is, um, this is a great example of buying a secondhand or thirdhand aircraft. And as you can tell, he didn't just jump in the plane and fly it home. Um, yeah. Of course, I hadn't flown the 40 hours off, but I've heard of people doing that even without having the 40 hours. Um, he, he brought it home with the wings off and then had it inspected by a, a third party, you know, other than himself yeah. uh, and also a mechanic, right? So um, went through all all systems to make sure everything's functioning properly, the engine. Um, so he went through all those proper steps and that's how I'd suggest to you all, if you ever bought an aircraft, whether flying or not, uh, to have somebody else go through it with you, especially if you're not familiar with the aircraft. And this is the first time you've flown or even owned one of these. Uh, that's the very first time. And as you guys know, the experimental guys know, and I had to learn all of this coming from standard category that I can't sign off on this thing because I, I'm not the builder. And I don't think there is, I even researched, some folks said there's some things you can go through that become the mechanic on this aircraft. And I found out it's, it's not true. I, I didn't build it, I can't sign off, so it has to have that 100 hour inspection, 
done or a, I think a yearly inspection done by an AMP. It doesn't have to be with the IA, but it has to don't be done by an AMP. So under their supervision, I may make modification, but they will know it and I will note it on my logs what I've done and they will sign off on it. So Casey said it perfectly, actually. You are, as, a, as an experimental aircraft owner in this class, able to do pretty much any modification that you want, but that modification still needs to be inspected and signed off by a mechanic and you still have to have yearly condition inspections. Condition. Thank you. I, I, did, I couldn't remember the wording, but it's called a condition inspection in the world of experimental. And I'm not allowed to do that because I didn't build airplanes. So, but it's not a big deal. It's not very expensive. I've got very good relationship with the shop because of my other aircrafts. All right, let's change gears here just for a second and talk about more of like the performance of this and the numbers that you fly at. Um, being this is a tail dragger, do you kind of roll up onto the mains before you depart or do you do a three point departure? What's that look like? You can literally do both with this aircraft, and I've done both. Um, at first, when I started, I would uh, I would level the airplane, and it usually does that at 60 miles an hour on the on the runway. That's a good number to go with on the on the indicated airspeed. Uh, 60 miles an hour, you can just barely touch it and pull it back. She'll come off the ground because she's got so much wing on it. It's cantilever, elliptical, et cetera, et cetera. And it's, so 60 miles an hour, you get it off the runway and you look for 80 to climb with. So as soon as your airspeed gets up to 80 miles, which is very shortly after, with a, I've got a climb prop on the aircraft. So it, does, it performs very well in takeoff and landing. So once it hits 80, you can pull it up and, you know, I don't have a rate of climb indicator in the aircraft, but I really feel like it will do easily 15 to 2,000, 1,500 to 2,000 feet per minute. Uh, so I climb up usually at 80, pull it up pretty steep, and I watch the airspeed and it really doesn't want to dip down below 80 very fast, even though I'm pretty steep going up. So that's so, so it's not a it's not a quick pull climb and you see an initial it it sustains at that speed. That's it, it really sustains well. I mean you, you I don't stand it straight up, but she climbs m more so than you would expect. Uh, and it it probably has something to do with the way the prop is. Again, it's got a climb prop on it. We are partnering with great companies like Dynon Avionics at dynon.com. Airtech Coatings at airtechcoatings.com. Clemens Insurance at clemensinsurance.net. South Mississippi Light Aircraft at flysmla.com. Foxtrot 95, Calhoun County Airport at flyfoxtrot95.com. Edge Performance at edgeperformance.no. Take a moment to go visit their websites at the links found below in the description of this video. And visit our website at experimentalaircraftchannel.com for events, our video library arranged in easy to find playlists on specific topics and so much more. Um, and then of course the, the airspeed I'm getting because it's a climb prop, it's about a 110 to 120, depending how the wind is blowing. And I, I don't need to go any faster. This is not the plane I bought to, you know, go fast somewhere. And at, and at 110, 120, I um, mean, this is a Volkswagen, and it's a smaller prop. What, what do you see in the RPM, around 3,000? or Right at 3,000. I was told, you know, cruise it at 3,100 RPM. But honestly, I, of course, I'm at sea level. So I've got a lot of benefit of that stuff that's happening with the right temperature, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm, I keep it at 2,900 RPM when I'm cruising the beach or cruising. Coming to you today, I came at 2,900 RPM, and I was getting 110 uh, the fuel consumption is somewhere around three, maybe three and a half gallon per hour. So, and it's got a 10 gallon or 10.5 gallon tank. So I can come here. It's a you know 30 minute flight to here, and uh, go back uh, without having to put fuel in it. And have plenty when I get there. I'm probably going to have right at half or just barely below half. That's a really nice economy cruise to be at 110 and about three and a half gallons an hour. I mean, you're sipping. Yeah, it's the the aircraft has pleasantly surprised me in everything that I, that I thought it would do. You know, uh, it's, it's done it better, in other words. The aircraft wants to stall somewhere between 40 and 45. That's where she stalls. So, so you've got a good margin. you got a very good margin. Now, this airplane doesn't have a flap on it. So you have to manage that energy. And because of the amount of wing, because it sits low to the ground, it's kind of like a Mooney. If you don't manage that energy, she'll just float to the end of the runway. And we got 10,000 feet at Panama City. 
And and I experienced that because first time that I flew it, I was telling you I flew it, took the canopy off. I wanted to hear everything. I was didn't want to be a test pilot, but I had to be in this particular plane because it didn't have two seats. And when I came back, I was very cautious, making sure I don't slam it down and do something goofy with it. And I noticed she just sat there and just floated. Well, I had to, again, get my AMP involved to get the RPMs correctly. It really needs to be somewhere between that high 800 to low 900 when you pull it back with the carp heat, which I use carp heat when I land around here. There's a lot of moisture in the air. So. All right, yeah, we, we talked off camera about this topic, and it's like you had to adjust your idle back so low so that you weren't really creating much thrust, but point. at the same time, you don't want to stall the engine. Yeah, you don't want to stall the engine. So <laughs> some of the funny things that happen or you know, kind of got everybody excited in the tower. My Mine is a Delta-class airport. It's got a tower, so, and they got, they, they're busier than they used to be. So the first time that I landed it, the RPM would go down to about 800 or maybe sometimes below that with the car heat. So once I landed it, the engine shut down because I had pulled it back to get the speed and bleed off the speed. Well, it's a good thing you found that on the ground and on uh, short final or something. Absolutely. Absolutely. But, but the beauty of it was, of course, as soon as it did that, I pushed the carb heat in and hit the start. It fired right back up. All right. So let's talk about, obviously, you didn't build this. So you can't give a, a cost to build, but you purchased this. So let's give everybody uh, an idea of what they could buy one of these for, uh, you know, secondhand. I was extremely surprised at the price. Um, the uh, I was a, you know the, the, these are priced somewhere between fifteen to twenty grand range, depending what kind of condition, how many hours on it. Of course, mine had very low hours on it, so they are usually wind up in the with between fifteen to twenty thousand dollars, and is and uh, that's where I was able to negotiate a price with the with the seller. So, and then after purchase, having your mechanic inspect it and all that, what would you add on top of that to actually get it to the flight stage? You know, the the, the, the part of getting the um, um, area of, uh, of your initial flight, the 30-mile area that, that, that you have to fly in, that cost me somewhere around $650 with a, what they call a DAR designated... Um, um, I can't remember the name now. Oh, so you mean you're talking about the actual inspection to be able to go into your 40? Yeah, for the FAA designated examiner or whatever that comes and looks at the aircraft, the guy that works with the experimental guys while they're building, well, the same guy has to look at the plane and approve of it. Uh, so I had to get a new guy to do it. So that was 650 and doing the inspection is somewhere around five to $700 by IA or AM. It, it can be done by an AMP. So it's usually five to seven hundred. So it's very inexpensive when it comes to, if you come from standard category like I have, it's just wow, how cheap is this? You know. So that's now, can I assume because um, you know it's the first flight and you probably have zero hours in this aircraft? Um, did you self-insure? Or did you actually get an insurance plan to cover you on this? So no. So what insurance does when you're into this? Of course, they know you got um, you got a tail dragger endorsement um, from the from the standard category stuff they know that um they are not going to insure you unless you have 40 hours of flight time or mine didn't so i flew it for 40 hours without any insurance um and uh after the 40 hours was completed then i they, then i fully insured it so now, is that because of of this particular aircraft is a very low uh, manufacturer number they wouldn't because there's other aircraft that you can get your first flight insured but they want you to have like five to ten hours in type before you actually fly it. So when you talk to your insurance company, was it specific to this because there wasn't many flying or why were, not, why were they not willing to, to insure you at first flight 240? My understanding was because this is a single seat aircraft. All right, well, Casey, uh, thanks for coming out to my airport to see me. It's such a joy to have uh, people come visit me versus me travel out to them because that very rarely happens, right? So thanks for coming to my airport and educating everybody on this uh, particular aircraft and your experiences with it so far. Thank you. Thanks for having me here. <clears throat> Enjoy a beautiful day to fly in, and uh, uh, I always love to talk airplanes. Awesome. All right. Well, um, Casey is good. He just informed me that his um, his kids are getting him a GoPro, <laughs> so he's going to start capturing stuff. But nothing available on social media to, to follow him at the moment. But uh, he's going to get into the digital age here real soon. Yes, that's correct. I'm. Uh, they have. You know, I've I've been wanting to video some of the experiences I have and share with the grandkids and family. So uh, I'm finally getting the GoPro for the very first time.
Thanks for watching this week's episode of the Experimental Aircraft Channel. Remember to like, subscribe, and hit that bell so you don't miss a single episode.